Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. This is a continuation of Wednesday's meeting. We did not adjourn. Wednesday is a continuation. We have all five commissioners present, uh, so we're continuing Wednesday's meeting. Uh, and we're going to do away with the invitation pledge because we've already done that. We did that Wednesday and during that meeting. Um, we have a, um, and you can tell I'm down to business, no jacket, no tie. <laughs> this is a work session. Okay. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'm going to make one comment here. The chairman has decided we are already prayed up, so. <laughs> now, I said, we, Steve asked me that, and I said, we need all the prayer we can get our hands on. <laughs> I'm hoping God is continually with us. I'm going to make a statement because I was not able to enter the conversation Wednesday, and I will apologize in advance, but hopefully I have that privilege. Is that a three-minute it is not a three-minute invitation. Uh, okay. Mr. Hook did give to us the billing uh, for the month of October of last year. Uh, it started, that billing cycle, which started October, uh, it, what he gave me was what they paid during the uh, month of October, but the billing bills themselves and he gave me invoices uh gave us all invoices you know, each and every one of us got this began on august the 4th and the last payment still made in october was um september october. Uh, excuse me october the 9th that's a billing period of 66 days so we cannot equate to a 30-day billing period or what the power bills would have been. We're looking at utility bills. I did not add up all the water bills and all the other. But in a for a period of 60 billing days, uh, 66 actually, uh, if you go equate from October 4 through, uh, excuse me, September, well, August 4 through September, October the 9th, that's 66 days. Now, 66 days, you had some bills that were paid at the beginning of the month for an, a unit and bills that were paid again in the same month. So I think the numbers were helpful, but I will not base my vote today or Monday upon those numbers because they don't equate to 30 days worth of work. I'm also, I've also pulled the North Carolina Public Schools statistical profile, uh, and the 23-24 is not out yet because 24 is not completed yet. Uh, but for the 22-23, uh, I'm looking at administrators, official uh, administrative managers, uh, which I would assume would be at central office, uh, total of 33, of those nine are state funded, one is federally funded, 23 are locally funded for the total of 33. Come down to principals, 35 are state funded and one is local funded for the total of 36. Assistant principals, he had 32 state funded, zero federal funded, and 20 local funding for assistant principal, a total of 52. Um, that's a grand total of 121 positions. Uh, and I'm just reading it straight off. I'm not trying to add to this or subtract or anything else. Just looking at the numbers. Uh, if you look at elementary teachers, State paid 972 positions, federal 88, 
and local funds 17 for a total of 1,077. Secondary teachers uh, 417 state, 16 fed, five local for a total of 438. And then other teachers, um, and I assume those are positions that are partially state funded, partially other. Uh, I know my wife, when she was teaching, for example, had uh, an IT position and all kinds of things, was a certified teacher at a master's level. But anyway, state funded 28, federal funds 11, and local funds 2, total of 39. Uh, got us. You had uh, zero local, 56 positions, state or federal. Uh, psychology, 10, and they're all state funded, zero local. Um, you go down to librarian, they were 30 state funded, and according to uh, the public school statistical profile, zero fed and zero local. Um, consultant supervisors, zero across the board. Other professional, state funded 138, eight federal, 12 local, total of 158, uh, for a total of all of those 254 positions. Teacher assistance, uh, 262 state, 39 fed, 16 local, total of 317. Uh, technicians, zero state, zero local, uh, excuse me, fed, 16 local only. Clerical, 120 state, two fed, 18 local, total of 115. Uh, you had service workers, 33 state, 82 local, total of 115. Skilled crab was amazing. 10 state, zero fed, and 22, a total of 32, uh, 22 local. And then uh, laborers unskilled, zero across the board. So I guess everyone hired by ABSS is a skilled worker. Uh, these numbers are quite telling. Uh, if we, the county, and Ms. York read out what is required, statutory requirements, for local funding. It, yet we have to provide funding for capital expenses. Uh, the teacher supplements and a number of things that we pay every single year and happily pay are not required by the county. Uh, basically, I have a mountain of information here. I don't plan to go through it. Uh, Ms. Senator Gailey called me just as I was leaving the house for this meeting. Uh, and she and I were uh, basically surprised at Dr. Harrison's statement to at least Channel 12 News, in which he said, yes, we got the letters. I'm coming close to a quote, if not an exact quote. Uh, yes, we got the letter on the investigation. Nothing turned up new, and I'm paraphrasing there. Um, and so therefore, the investigation was a large waste of taxpayer money. I find that, and so did Senator Gailey, absolutely astounding. Uh, we, the letter itself from GovOps states, among other things, uh, that school board members for their state violations, North Carolina general state uh, statute violations and or procedural violations, the school board members personally may have personal liability if I was a school board member, I would be shaking in my boots and checking my insurance profile and everything else. Uh, that's not out of the ordinary. Uh, I just find that absolutely incredible. Uh, and so did Senator Gailey. I'm not trying to quote her, but uh, we both were shocked. Uh, to go on regional te television and say, gee golly, Nothing's wrong. 
Uh, we have a yes, lot that's wrong, guys. We have a lot that's wrong. We need to fix it. And we cannot fix it with commissioners or anybody else just going into La La Land or into Candy Land or any other land that you choose and giving everybody everything that they want. We've got to rein in the... I have numerous taxpayers that have called me and are stating gee, I'm retired, I don't have a retirement system, I'm living on Social Security, and I'm looks like I'm going to have to sell my house to pay the taxes. And I'm choosing between food and medicine and absolute necessities to make it day to day. We, five commissioners, have an absolute obligation to not only the schools, the students, the parents, teachers, everybody, but also to the taxpayers. And we cannot open the fantasy doors and give everybody everything they want. Ms. York, you gave us a wonderful projected budget. I think we need to look at that. And what we stated for our work sessions was that we were going to tweak your budget, not recreate it not go into a fantasy land, not go into a wish list. We need to tweak your suggested budget. And I am praying and begging the four other county commissioners to look at that carefully. We cannot continue to take advantage of, of taxpayers or anybody else. We've got to be straightforward. Uh, and we cannot open the doors to a fantasy wish list. I'm through with my opening statement, apologize in advance. Dr. Harrison, uh, don't mean to step on toes uh, and know we're not ready for you. Okay. Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. I might like to add something to what you said, some information I gleaned while looking online this past week, uh, overnight. Um, I looked at the Public School Foundation website and just looked at, uh, looked through the whole schedule of counties and looked at the, only, uh, there were six school systems out of a hundred that had similar student populations. They call that an ADM, average daily member, but similar stu student populations to what Alamance County has. I used a range of 19,326 to 22,967. We're at 21,832, so that's above us and below us. Of those six schools, we rank the highest. Now, this is in 21-22. There wasn't any more current information available there. It didn't appear. We rank 61st, which is not above the middle of the pack, but it's at the highest of the six districts in a total appropriation from the county to the schools at $48.9 million. The only county that was higher, we ranked high, highest from the perspective of daily membership or student population. Our dollar allocation per student, that was 2240, 2240. The, the, um, the numbers ranged from about 1854 per student up to our high of 2240. Now the highest county contribution was 51 million 246, 266 from Pitt County, they had a higher, they had the highest student population, so their per, per student allocation was lower than ours. But we, of those six districts, I'm just pointing out for those people who've been naysayers and say that Alamance County has not taken care of its schools, we've, off, we've offered, well, we've provided what was asked, and in this particular situation, among our peers, we were the highest. So we've been trying to do the job, and we're trying to do the job now. And similar to what you've said, I've had a number of people comment to me. I was in a meeting this morning. I had people, numerous people come up to me and ask me what was going to happen. Um, people do not want us to trash the schools, number one, but they want the schools to be responsible, 
to the citizens for the use of funds. And I think we all recognize, and I think current administration at the school system recognizes that historically, in, the, in particular in the last couple of years, they have not been appropriate stewards of the funding that was provided. Monies have not been spent that was provided on what it was off, what it was provided for. We've said that over and over again. We've disclosed that. We had millions of dollars sitting idly while roofs were not being repaired that we had given them. Um, we've done our job on our end. ABSS has got to step up to the plate, clean up its act, and get themselves on board for providing a consummate school system for the citizens of Alamance County. Um, we've got to clean up the problem with, uh, with the school performance. That has, that's a got to do. And I think Dr. Harrison realizes that, and I anticipate that our new superintendent will realize that. Um, we've done a tremendous job as a county, not looking at the, at the commissioners individually, but as citizens of Alamance County, time to take care of our schools. Um, the job now, and, and I had a conversation earlier today with that, over that same material with Dr. Harrison and talk to him about the issue of confidence in the ability of ABSS finance to manage the funds. And he pointed out a situation which I've asked uh, Attorney Stevens, our county attorney, to look into. To He said that, I believe, uh, correct me if I'm incorrect, I believe you said it was Wake, uh, Wake uh, not Wake, excuse me, Forsyth, Winston-Salem Forsyth School System was had a contractual arrangement with their they they operated without a fund balance operated without for a number of years i don't know whether or not that's still the case i don't think it is when don martin who's now a county commissioner up there or a superintendent they did not have a fund balance but they anything that was left over they returned to the county is my assumption because they, they never had a fund balance and i and the, the contractual thing came in you, right you didn't mention you're going to check with your attorney to see if that was legal right and then I, I said, possibly our attorneys can work together and do something right. that would be contractual. And, and the context of that, you, I'm not... Right, I'm just saying that that, until, until I think our confidence level is raised, that would be an appropriate direction to try and take, to make sure that the funds that we provide are being spent as they're being requested, and that the citizens of the, of the county are getting the, getting value for what they provide to the ABSS. Um, Commissioner Carter, we spoke about that on the phone shortly before this meeting, and uh, like I've said in the past, a bit of a hyperbole, all things are possible through contract. Um, I, I'm happy to look at it. it. It could be a possibility, it very well might be, but it's not anything I have any experience with, and we can certainly look at doing it if that's what the board wants. Sure. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Carter, I'm not quite sure I understand. You're contracting for, for what? For the way I understood it, and this was a conversation I had with Dr. Harrison, the, the funds that were, if there were funds left over in the Winston-Salem Forsyth County fund, a fund balance that would be returned to the county. I don't know how they got there, but, uh, right. but they had no fund balance. And, and can I get more so people can hear me or? Well, state law says basically that funds that are not expended by the school system at the end of the fiscal year, June 30, are returned to the state. The law is totally opposite of that uh, for counties. Uh, we give you a sum of money effectively in Salem, uh, July 1st, and then monies not expended for the purpose intended are not returned to the county. So it's an entirely upside down situation or opposite situation, state versus county. Mr. Um, Chair is correct. I think that's exactly what they're intending to try to change contractually is that state law obligation not to return that money that they would say, all right, well, the state doesn't require us to do it, but we have a contract with the county that requires us to return those funds. Um, and again, theoretically, it seems like it might be something that's possible. I will tell you that from what I'm looking at right now, 
Um, Forsyth County does have a fund balance that they carry. So at some point in the past, um, they've decided to go away from that model for reasons that I don't yet understand. But again, this is a conversation that Mr. Carter and I had 30 minutes ago or less. Right. Yeah, but the point is, today, today's policy, if we give it to them effectively July 1, we do not get any money's return. Uh, unlike with capital, with a $5 million for selling high's roof, $5 million sitting in our account for Graham High School, we kept that, did not write checks um, because they had not entered into any contracts since 2022 when those funds were available. And we don't control that, except we do control the spending. Uh, you know, I co-signed check the large checks along with the, our financial director uh, for all those checks. I know when they go through. But if they don't enter contracts on those capital projects, i.e., for example, hypothetically, those two roofs, then the roofs aren't repaired, um, but the money is there sitting waiting. Uh, unlike other funds, supplemental supplements for teachers, for example, and so forth. Um, and I, I think we need to go back. Mr. Lashley, Wednesday, you talked about reducing teacher supplements. I'm not in favor of that, but I am in favor of looking at those unfilled positions and not funding those unfilled positions because we're giving them money, which turns into, in my estimation, a slush fund, and they spend it well and we don't get it back. So I do not want to fund those unfilled positions. And we heard a number, a number of different numbers. Uh, Dr. Harrison, I think you said at one time nine or 11 or something, and then that was corrected to uh, maybe as many as 200. Uh, but that involved coaches and uh, all kinds of other positions that don't necessarily receive school supplements. So I think neither number is on the nose. Uh, be nice to know what those numbers are, but we can go back to 23, 24 numbers uh, and 22, 23 numbers uh, and figure out the ones that were not, the positions that were not filled. And I think those are the monies that we should not be giving to the school system, the supplement, supplementary monies additional, because if they're not filled, that money stays in the ABSS coffers. Okay. Uh, a potential uh, suggestion that may address these concerns, I don't know. Um, if the primary concern is the number for, of utility for utilities, which is right now estimated at 2.55, I think, million dollars. Um, and I get that that's an uncertain number because the school system's never intended to use its, its HVAC in the way that it would next year in order to prevent further mold issues. Um, and there's a new high school. And they're dehumidifiers. So if, if that number is uncertain, I think it's the best number we have. Take that number, allocate it to the county, to a special line item, and then let the school system come to us if they need it, which they inevitably will need some of it. That way it's budgeted, it's held for them, and they can access it. But they also should manage their, their utilities properly and minimize the need for it. That way it's not a contracting back and forth. It's just, here's the money, come get it if you need it, which might satisfy all those concerns. Yeah. If, if you look at the utility bills, and Mr. Hook, um, I have a lot of respect for that gentleman, uh, told us this is the highest month that we have, which is why I gave you the bills, the invoices for that month, because I don't want to be underfunding, was his statement. And that's a paraphrase. Uh, so it gave us the highest month. Uh, and it was really high, but it was also not for a 30-day time period of billing, but for a 66-day time period of billing. So I don't think we can use those numbers as accurate numbers. I think we have to follow Ms. York's position, uh, go from what we had prior to the late submitted budget um, and and just 
look at it as, as we go. But I cannot trust a 66-day billing period and take that as the, quote, high, and then times that by 12. Just, I don't feel comfortable at all doing that. Well, if you take that and, and annualize it, divide it by 66 and then multiply it by 365, you get a more accurate annual number. Commissioners, we are prepared to walk through roughly three point two million dollars. Both the county workforce adjustment discussion and a ABSS funding discussion based on what we heard at your last work session. Would you allow us to walk us through that and try to guide some decision making here so that we can get ourselves closer to an adopted budget position? We welcome that. Thank you. Are you, we ready to go that route? We're ready. Okay. It's a brilliant idea. So we will walk through a, a PowerPoint to try to help organize and reflect what we have heard from you all in terms of what your priorities were and what adjustments are penciled in and on the table for discussion at this point. Rebecca, will you go ahead and start us there? Sure. So we wanted to provide a reminder of those priorities that you set during your board retreat this year and that we mentioned again at the recommended budget that you asked us to focus on conservative revenue and expenditure management, supporting the county workforce, addressing community needs, and prioritizing capital and facility needs. And the adjustments that you have recommended so far do fall in line with those priorities, and so I think we are well on track. We did want to bring to your attention the list of positions not recommended that's located in your budget book. Um, on page 85 in the county attorney section, the recommended position count inaccurately showed five positions. Uh, the assistant county attorney position that was requested was not recommended, and so that number should have been four positions or four FTEs. Uh, so you can see by the slide here that it was shown on the list of positions that were not recommended. Um, but all of the other pages in the budget book are accurate. But we wanted to make sure that you were aware of that error. The peer support specialist for that was talked about, because that goes with um, recovery court, pretrial, yes. all that. That is recommended. That, that is, is recommended. out of opioid settlement funds. Okay, thank yeah. you. This is on page 72 of your budget book. If you are having a hard time seeing that like me. <laughs> Quick, quick question on that. The, um, the assistant county attorney position, the public information officer position of net county costs is zero. Is that accurate? That's correct. They, we were out reallocating savings within the budget to fund those positions. So if we fund those positions, it would, I mean, how would that, would that impact where we are now with, our, with the budget request? No. Um, for the county attorney position, um, there was an offset in the contracted legal services, so we reduced that, and that made that position not require additional funding. We had that set aside in the contracted services and the public information officer position. I was reallocating a um, vacant position. We were cutting from tax and appraisal services. So it was a wash in terms of new funding for that. That position is still cut, and we still have a cut of contracted services. Say that again. That position is still cut. Which one? The the appraisal the appraiser position in tax. Yeah. All right. So moving along, just as a reminder, where we are in terms of proposed adjustments to the recommended budget on the Alamance County government side at this point. Uh, we have heard recommendations from staff to reduce the economic development budget by 30000 due to a grant that is expiring, a net zero change to the library department due to additional funds and a grant that was awarded. And then we also heard, um, again, a net zero change where we would use sign-on bonuses for hard-to-fill positions 
by reallocating funding from lap salary in the sheriff's department, EMS, and DSS for a total of 50,000 for each department. Can I just offer a clarification? The hard to fill positions are consistent with the market study that you all did. So it should actually be reflecting detention officers. Yes. I needed some clarification if the board wanted to expand that to do all sheriff positions, which was would not be consistent with the hard to fill vacancy positions that were studied in the market study. So in the case of DSS, we were narrowing that just to social workers. Um, for EMS, we were narrowing that just to paramedics. And then for the sheriff, we would want to narrow that to be consistent for just to detention, although that was not the proposal that you heard. So I did want some clarification if this moves forward on exactly who you wanted covered with this idea. I think the sheriff's been pretty clear that we're, that the, we're cut to the bone right now on patrol deputies too. Our shifts are thin. If we're cut from 12 to 13 down to five or six, um, I can't even imagine being I've told, I've told some of the other commissioners I can't imagine being at one end of the county and my backup being at the other end of the county uh, 45 minutes or more away in a situation where you don't have local law enforcement typically going to back up sheriff's deputies out in the county. So I, I think that's, those are positions that are critical for us to get. We don't want to go any lower and we definitely need to get them back in line. I just wanted to offer the reminder that the market study phase two will include the sheriff positions outside of detention. Right. Let me also add, we did phase one of the study. Our, we increased detention officer salaries uh, to comply with the market. Uh, they are at or above market study currently. That is correct. Um, and Sheriff Johnston is really good about sending uh, exit letters or information to us and almost never is it financial? They're leaving because of family concerns, because of uh, safety issues, all kinds of other issues. Uh, talk within this, you know, various reasons, but almost never is it over the money. And the same thing I'm hearing from teachers. Uh, they're not leaving ABSS. They tell me uh, because of the money, they're leaving because they're not, uh, they think, backed up by principals, assistant principals, or the administration. Now, a lot of that has changed, and I look forward to much less negative comments in the future uh, because many of the principals have been changed and moved, and the strong principals have now Smith to turn time is a good example. That principal, very, very strong. Um, and now hopefully will turn a failing middle school into a non-failing middle school. That's going to take time to see. Uh, and that principal at Smith had a very, very strong reputation of backing faculty, uh, meeting with parents when necessary, straightening behavioral issues out. But that's not the case across the board. Uh, and so I'm hoping that Dr. Harrison in the short term and the new superintendent in the long term can turn that around so that we don't have 17 failing schools and we have hopefully zero failing schools. But that's going to take an administration that's tough. You can't just, you know, everybody uh, pat on the back and gee golly, uh, it's going to require some <laughs> Occasionally, maybe replacements, uh, new personnel, who knows? Thank goodness that's your job, not right. mine. So we have Wait now. just a minute. <laughs> just a minute. Okay, um, I just want to comment on the sheriff's stuff, not the sheriff's, but law enforcement before I forget it. Sorry, John. Um, I've been on this commission board. This is my third year, kind of four, however you look at it, how you get elected. And every year we hear the same story about we're short, we're short. We hear it with DSS, we're short. We're here with all of them, we're short. These are jobs that have turnovers. They just do, every job has a turnover. It is, it's no blame, it's just reality. And every, we have done raises, we have done bonuses, 
and we still have the same problems. That tells me it's not a money issue. It may be something else, what I said the other day to Jackie Fortner. That is something we have got to look at. And, and just one more thing, if we're gonna talk about each subject in between, let's don't go after the school system after everything we talk about. We started out with our opening statement talking about the school system, and then we went to sheriff, and then we went right back to putting the school system down, and I'm bringing the sheriff back in. We, we cannot do this as leaders is personally have our own personal issues to attack whatever agency in this county. There is nobody perfect. You were talking about Craig Turner's wife, Julie. She is amazing. But Absolutely. there are other Julies in ABSS that are amazing. You can ask Julie that, and she will tell you that. I don't know how you know all this unless you're walking the halls of school. And I know you hear things just like all five of us do. But there are more good than bad. That's true in everything. There are bad this and good this, no matter what uniform or what outfit you wear. But we, we, can't, we can't do the same thing every year to where we're going to do this. And I'm already hearing it. And it gets us nowhere except everybody gets mad. I don't know if you've read social media. People are livid. There, there's, there's a caricature on Facebook right now because of a comment that was made. And that's, that's more distraction. That pulls us away from the issues that we really need to work on solving. And, and it's almost like we, if we go over here, we can talk about this and not talk about what we need to talk about. And the sheriff come in here, $10,000 sign-on bonus. Wake County has five or 7,500. I don't have it pulled up right here. But they have a billion dollar or more so budget. They put in hundreds of millions in their school system. We just can't, Wake has a $7,500 thing. Forsyth County has a $5,000 sign-on bonus. Durham County has a $6,000. Charlotte Mecklenburg, $7,500. And we are doing a $10,000. And these people, like $2.8 billion, $581 million, 966 little old Durham, million. Charlotte Mecklenburg, $2.36. We're gonna have to have reality here because we just, because we love our sheriff, and I do, I highly respect him and all the men and women that work with him. But we absolutely cannot, every time somebody walks in the door, whatever you want, we got you. Because we gotta really, if we're gonna do budgets and we're gonna look at who gets what and is fair, we have to look at everybody. And I mean, it's, John, it's really hard for me to sit here and, and, and just hear this because I don't think it's fair. I understand where you feel and I respect that. And you got good reasons, you know. I just don't want us to go down this hole again. We do this every year. I've watched this for eight years as a school board member. We, we got to be better than this because we got real big problems, real big problems. And we also have kids and teachers that need us to make sure that we help solve those problems. That's the future. And forgive me for being short with you. I don't mean to be short with you, but it is, it's just so difficult. It, it's just difficult. I think we're better than this. I know we are. I know we are. So. I'm sorry, I'm just really Ms. Thompson, sorry. I'm in total agreement with you. I'm saying bonuses have never, we tried that. I don't like bonuses. Yeah, I, I'm in total agreement. Uh, there was a four to one vote when we voted for bonuses for social services. I was the negative vote, yeah. and I said then, bonuses do not work. They just flat they out the door. They took the bonus and left Alamance County. Uh, we see the same thing with Dr. Butler the podium was there in those days instead of here, uh, who said that uh, 18 million, 900 and some thousand dollars, just under 19 million, did not help retention. Those were his words. Did not keep teachers in the school system. 19 million dollars. Uh, bonuses do not work, and I'm in total agreement with Ms. Thompson. Uh, I do not like the idea of paying these large bonuses, um, you know, if you ever even considered it, I would only vote for su such nonsense unless it was tied to a contract that required to a minimum of a two-year commitment. And we do not have such a, uh, the ability at today to do that. I guess we could do that, but. Uh, I thought we did, I had a conversation with 
Mr. Stevens, and I thought we did have the ability to put staff a, a would need have the time. ability, but we don't have that in place. Oh, we don't have it in place. It. Right. We don't have. Bill had mentioned seed seed money. Is that the right word? What's the right word? Hundred and some right. thousand seed money <coughs> to start that. So I remember that. No, it's only for ten people though. Yeah. Right. So to address the issue of contracts to repay bonuses, um, realistically. Uh, we can have a contract in place that requires them to repay the bonus. Um, practically, what that amounts to is an agreement by the employee to forego any vacation time accrued and forego their last paycheck if they leave during that period of time. And then it could give us the right to sue the employee to try to recover the difference between what they had allowed us to keep and what they owe. Um, my historical um, interaction with that process is that there's not usually a lot of uh, liquid finances to go after in those situations and very few people just repay that bonus voluntarily so having a contract in place doesn't mean that we're guaranteed to get that money back I just want to make sure the board's aware of that yeah. may I make a recommendation um, at this point what we're recommending has zero impact on the recommended budget or the subsequent adopted budget we could certainly come back as a board since this is a policy decision rather than a budget decision and really think through, especially in light of our market and compensation study, how do we do this practically, methodically, um, while meeting the needs of each of the commissioners and also the needs of the departments for those hard to fill positions. So is that um, something you would accept that we kind of put that piece of it aside for now and walk through those that have budget implications today? Well, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I actually have a suggestion that does have a budget impact. Okay. Potential budget, actually, not a revenue, I mean, an impact on the allocations mm -hmm. of dollars, not adding more dollars. Okay. And it will put this to bed, at least for today, I think. Um, and that is this. Uh, I've been talking about these hard-to-fill positions for a long time. So has the rest of this board. Um, we, we indicated that at our Monday meeting. The, the Sheriff's Department came back and made a recommendation for, for sign-on bonuses. I know there, there are subsequent conversations with DSS uh, director who has said that Sign-on bonuses for the hard to fill social workers are a good idea too. Um, we this board considered that some time ago and rejected that. Um, but I know there were, there were some conversations with the uh, the director of EMS, and there was a different proposal for EMS that does not involve um, sign-on bonuses, but rather salary uh, request for salary increases for the hard to fill paramedics position. I asked staff to look into that based upon the number. If there was a $2,000 increase to their salary, that it would include the FICA benefits and everything for the number of paramedics that we have, it would be a, a um, cost of $245,000. Okay. On the board is $30,000 that, uh, that we have in the budget that's unused. Subtracting that's $215,000. A way to pay for that would be, instead of giving a 3% COLA to every individual in the county would be a 2.75% COLA to everybody in the county, which would pay for the $2,000 increases to EMS. So, in order to give everybody what they've requested, or close to it, I want to make a motion. It'll pass or it won't, and then we can move on. And that is that we, for the Sheriff's Department, both for patrol and for detention, that we have a $4,000 sign-on bonus at the beginning, a $4,000 sign-on bonus a year in that we have the same for DSS social workers who are hard to fill and that for EMS we have a $2,000 increase in this budget to their salary and that there would be a corresponding shift in the COLA which would be 2.75% for everyone else. That is the motion. I say we vote for it and then move on. All right. Uh, so, okay. hearing, hearing no second at this point. Oh, let's move on. Very well. Yeah. Well, I was ready to second it. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I just got some questions about what you did. Yeah, so do I. Uh, just yeah. the numbers, I didn't write them down fast enough. Uh, you said you wanted 4K for the sheriff patrol. Four and four. Four and four. Four at the beginning, four at the end. And four for um, the uh, DSS social services. I didn't know. Social did. workers. Social workers, sorry. I think there are 11 or 12 positions who are, that are on the yeah. mm -hmm. And that, would, that, that number was what from you? One four. And we tried that with social services two years ago, and it fell flat. It, it did not increase a single person. I think there was one. I think there was one person. And they left, Perhaps. if I remember correctly. 
So why are we repeating a previous failure? Because we have holes that we cannot fill for a number of years, and these are the requests of the department heads on the way to fill it. I have pushed DSS a number of times to go in a different direction. They have resisted, and this is their request. I say we give it nine months, which would give us time to, to see if it works before our next the next round of, of budget talks for next year. If it doesn't work, it's scrapped. If it works, great. If it does work for the sheriff and DSS, it's paid at a lap salary. There's no budget impact, and it gives all of those departments what they've asked for to help the hard-to-fill positions. That's fine. The only, and my second was we're gonna, I was going to make a, a re request that you amend that, your motion to include a contract for recoup recoupment. I would not include a contract for recoupment. I think it makes it more difficult, and I think we're never going to sue somebody yeah. for $3,000 when they leave and, and, and want their, their pay. That's not a great it. incentive. <laughs> we'll sue your butt if it don't work out. I, mean, I, I would, mm -mm. Okay, Mr. Carter. Are you doing a second with his current motion with no contracts? I'll second it with no contract. All right, any other discussion? Other than mine, we've tried this before. It fell flatly on its face. It cost us a ton of money. It bonuses do, without contracts particularly do not work. Now. All in favor wait, wait, wait. Of Craig, can I, I'm sorry, John, can I ask you, you're talking about 2.7 um, and from the three. Do these folks already have the three? Is this countywide, what you're talking about? Well, they, would, they don't have the three until we vote for the three. But I mean, the three is proposed for every county employee. I think the motion is to reduce it to 2.75 for every county employee. So we've already cited on having three. For every county employee. That was the what that was, I had recommended. That's right. all. Okay. It would, and, it would take that down. Okay. Yeah. And that would, these people that we're talking about are short, that are consistently short, would have three. No. No. That's not what I understood. They'd have 2.75 plus $2,000. Just the paramedics. You're talking about reducing some county, current county employees to benefit these signing bills. Who are the some? You're reducing some. You're, every single county employee would go to a 2.75% COLA versus the proposed 3% in order to fund increases for paramedics at $2,000 on top of their pay. So, Ms. Thompson, as I understand it, that's a decrease for every current county employee. Yeah. And let me just be clear that this is not what the department's actually requested. I asked both the DSS director and the EMS director, if they were given a choice between doing a sign-on bonus or a pay increase, which would they prefer in terms of effectiveness? And DSS said they wanted to pursue sign-on bonuses. They thought that would be a better recruitment tool. And EMS said that they would prefer a pay adjustment for paramedics and EMTs versus a sign-on bonus. It was his philosophy that those did not necessarily work in the past, sign-on bonuses. So that's where we've arrived at. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, does the sheriff fall in there anywhere? The sheriff's department? Uh, did he the, mention that he would like the increase in salary or? Uh, I didn't solicit no worries. To, to the sheriff. Because no. he was part of that salary study. All of these departments were part of the salary study, yes. So they did receive adjustments in pay with the market study that the rest of the workforce did not, right? The rest of the workforce was not benchmarked. That's common, though, eventually. They'll be in either a phase two or three if they weren't included in phase but one. But these three that we're talking about are included in countywide 3%. That's salary. Everybody is proposed to receive a 3% cost of living adjustment, gotcha. but with Craig's motion, I'm sorry, Commissioner Turner's motion, it would be reduced to 2.75 for everybody in order to find the savings to pay for a $2,000 adjustment for 100 paramedic positions. Are there other questions? Well, what would be the impact if we eliminated the adjustment of a quarter percent? to the COLA. 
you would need to find $245,160 to do a $2,000 pay increase for the paramedics. But that's only for the paramedics. Yes. The what sign on bonus. The overall I'm sorry? What would be the overall number? Um, for, to do what? Sheriff's Department, uh, Social Services, So the department, yeah, the departments that we were looking at doing sign-on bonuses for, we were not planning to allocate any new funds. We would tr either trim back the vacancy rate to get them some seed money and then use lap salary for future. So it would not be a, a request for new funding for the sign-on bonus. How much negative impact would it have? Financially? Financially. The sign-on bonuses we don't think would have an upfront cost. It just, your cost is each time you offer the sign-on bonus, and then if if it doesn't work as a retention tool, then you're, you know, out. So it could be zero, but it could be a large number. There will be a cost, yes. Mm -hmm for the sign-on bonuses. I just don't know how many positions they'll be hiring over the course of the year. I think we heard from the sheriff that he was hoping to hire 10 in a year. So it's kind of an estimate. Yeah. Guess, the original plan. A guess really guesstimate, not estimate. <laughs> Correct. The original plan was for it to expire and or to sunset at 80% of the vacancies. Yeah, but that's not the motion. No. I'm just telling you what the original plan was you weren't here. Yeah. I did have some numbers on pay adjustments with uh, over time for detention officers, paramedics, and social workers, if that's helpful. Um, you all have made some adjustments to those salaries. I have the data back from 2020. So a detention officer back on January 1st, 2020 was making 35789 they are now at a current starting salary rate of $53,898. Uh, they also get a $4,000 shift differential for that. For paramedics, in 2020, they were at a starting salary of $36,485. They are now at a starting salary of $47,528. And for social worker, um, one, or social worker IAT, they started in January 1, 2020 at 43510 and they are now at 55014 So they've had COLA adjustments, special adjustments by the board, um, market study adjustments to help get those salaries up. Can you just repeat the detention numbers, please? Yeah, the detention officer started on January 1st, 2020. The starting salary was 35789 and to date, our current starting salary for uh, uh, June 1st is 53898 And that's as of June 1st of this year? Correct. It's about a 50.6% increase. Do you have those percentages in front of you? I do. Can you just read, read them? Sure. The total percentage from 2020 to 2024? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Detention officer is a 50.6, 50.6% increase. Uh, paramedic 30.3 and um, social worker IAT is 26.4 percent increase. And for the numbers that I've seen, our detention officers are paid, are some of the highest paid in this region. Is that correct? They, um, the market study did not significantly adjust their sal their salary because it was found that they were not below the market. Thank you. When will phase two be done? When, when, when can you expect to see those? We would like to bring phase two um, back to the board in November for a January 1 implementation date. I, I, I'm sorry, Are you from, I think the focus should be, if there is a focus, on EMS. They are the lowest, and um, I mean, they're all vital. You can't, I don't, it's like picking which kid you like in your family, <laughs> and that can be any particular day. But um, it's, we hear detention a lot, we hear DSS a lot because they're constantly in the fire. But EMS is in the fire too. Um, they all are, anybody, first responder. Yeah. Um, I, I don't, bonuses are, 
when you take taxes out and you got cost of inflation, it's, you don't even know you got it. Um, I would like to see us do something for EMS. And, um, and, I'm, and I'm not picking and choosing my favorites because they're all wonderful. But when I hear these numbers, um, that's just my opinion. Ms. Thompson, just, just uh, uh, from what I understand, the bonuses would be grossed up to net the 5000 or 4000 or whatever it might be. So the That detention officer makes more than a teacher. Call for the question, Mr. Chairman. You know what I'm saying? Read. Would a teacher want to be in the detention center? Well, I don't know what a detention officer Mr. want to be Tom, in the ninth grade. <laughs> would you repeat your motion? Yeah, call for the question. Uh, the motion. Uh, the motion is um, that we um, uh, add side on bonuses for uh, sheriff's patrol and detention and for EMS social workers. DSS. Social DSS, DSS social workers. An amount of 4000 sign on and 4000 one year after employment. And further, that for um, EMS paramedics, that we increase their salary by $2,000 with accompanying salary requirements associated with that increase, which totals $247,000, and that the, the EMS paramedics increase be offset by a corresponding $247,000 paid for by a reduction of the COLA currently valued in manager's budget at 3% to 2.75%. Question has been called. It's Mr. Turner's motion, Mr. Carter's second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed signify by saying no. 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 Yeah, three no's, two yes's. Thank, Thank you. you. My focus was EMS. Continue, please. All right. Uh, do we have consensus around the adjustment to economic development of decreasing by 30000 for the expiration of that grant? That was a staff recommendation. Okay. Uh, and then... I heard consensus also for the library adjustment, which did not have an impact on the total bottom line. So moving to the schools, we have a couple of alternatives that have been proposed in terms of additional funding to ABSS. The first alternative was a total of 3,048,000, and that was for 2,553,000 additional funding for utilities and 495,000 for roof and HVAC preventative maintenance contracts. The second alternative, which was not formally made at our last meeting, but we did discuss, was an increase of 6,830,790. That was mentioned sort of at the last minute when Steve was asked to pencil that one in. So I wanted to capture that up here and make sure that everybody's points were that was for me. It's awkward. I did it. <laughs> so you, it doesn't hurt to ask. I'd also like to say that um, with the ball fields, because this is going to play in here, with the ball fields that's been reduced, which means lights is not fixing the ballpark, that I would like to see if it would be okay if we would take those two years of proposed amounts for those ball fields and put them towards something else. Uh, I would rather it be done the way it's supposed to be if I have to do a campaign to get this funded through the public. I, I would rather do that because um, this, is, this is a biggie for me. I really worked hard for this the other year, but I'm, it's a no-brainer to sacrifice this. This is to something because um, it, I just want it to focus on the schools because they are in such dire straits. And I mean, I don't know how you rearrange money like that or if you even care for it, but I'm not going to fuss about having that. That can go to somewhere else to move that. We just we just got to get this right, and that's something that can wait. Because the Everett Jordan will be done, and it'll be done, and and we'll just work on the other two. If I have to do it privately, um, I just want this this maintenance 
with this school system or we're going to read right back where we always have been. And we just cannot do that because um, we are right back at COVID and mold when it comes to being divided. And we cannot keep doing this because of our community. You know, I hear parents, we just cannot keep doing this. Like I said, John and all you guys, it is such a major distraction and that is so defeating and it takes all the focus off of the kids and the teachers. And if we don't have those two, we don't have a future. And um, I just, that's just something I wanted just to mention about these ball fields. I texted Heidi and said, am I allowed to bring that up and mention it and you can bring up anything. So that's kind of what I did. You're proposing to take it out of the budget? And put right. it toward, just move it. Move it where? Toward the school, especially for that 495. So you're going to want, you want to move 1.5 to the school? It wasn't 1.5. I was, I was supposed to. I wish. 350,000. They brought three, it down to 350. It was 350 for two years, that's 700. Right? Yeah. We're not allocating two years worth. This is one year budget. So and it's actually funded within the county's capital reserve. Okay, well, right, right. You need to help me on this. I just am willing to do anything to sacrifice to make our county on the same path and we work together because we are going to have to. Yeah. So the funding for that project mm -hmm. would go back into county capital okay. reserve, which is a restricted capital. Well, just write me a check. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you the money to, so, for the school current expense out of that. Three hundred fifty thousand is the number. Right. Yes. I'm just. I'm so just if you want to find a delete way. that project, we can do that. Okay. It's just not able to go to the school current expense budget. Let me go back. I reviewed minutes from June of 2021 with Dr. Thorpe, <coughs> and he assured us that he had quarterly maintenance projects for every HVAC system that he had uh, twice a year roof individual roof inspections and on and on and on and none of that happened it was a fiction when it was said we county commissioners did not know that it was a fiction but with COVID we found out because for example again turn time uh, when uh, Mr. Bass came in with photographs. He had all kinds of materials in the HVAC systems, including paper, cups, you name it. It was inside and had never been inspected. And we were told at one point that, gee, we are, have never replaced filters. Uh, I find that hard to believe, but I believe that, that they did that because their expert, their paid expert, was telling us that. Um, so we again can give all kinds of monies to ABSS, but Ms. Graves as chair, Dr. Harrison as superintendent, it's up to you guys to make sure the roofs get repaired or the HVAC system filters get replaced. We don't have a say so in that. We can fund it but we cannot make you do your jobs. Um, so I am pleading and begging you to not do what's happened in the past. Before we move on, I just want to make sure what we just voted on, when I voted no, did that give a $10,000 sign-on bonus to the sheriff? No. Or no. the other bonuses? It's taking it all away. Okay, okay. That did no, not That was a get a three to two vote, okay. it failed. Okay. So is there interest in going with the 495000 for roof and HVAC preventative maintenance contracts? That was part of your alternative one. It's going to be uh, $2.5 million for utilities and then the preventative maintenance contracts. Are you saying that if we don't do the utilities, um, what's, are there lights going to get cut off? I mean, this is... A, What's going to happen with this? Because it's going to be high. I mean, we know that because of just inflation and Duke Power, their precious little sales, and just everything else. And just with running stuff 24-7, they've never done that before. And you've got a new high school, too, which is the size of bigger than Holly Hill Mall. Right. So what happens with that? The discussion of the proposed budget change is the PAYGO money goes from $3.3 .3 million the $3.9 million, $600,000 increase. Um, I feel like 
that's the increase that they need and if used reasonably, uh, I don't think we can use Mr. Hook's numbers as to a 66 day period of time and expect that to be times 12. <clears throat> just, just not a realistic number. I think we've got to, um, despite what we now are receiving the school system, pick hard numbers and live with it. And $600,000 with PAYGO money is a substantial increase. Just let me clarify for a moment. The PAYGO funding is within the Davenport model for Correct. capital projects. The current expense request would include such things as funding for utilities and maintenance, a separate pot of money that's outside of the PAYGO. Okay, mm -hmm. so I just want to make sure we're clear about that. The way that the current expense funding works is that you're giving a lump sum allocation. It's either at the beginning of the fiscal year, which is what we did this year, or it's one twelfth paid monthly, depending on the preference of the boards. Um, you can say that you would fund two and a half million for utilities, but that is captured in the full current expense amount that would go to the schools to help support their operating needs. And where is that money coming from? That is coming from your general fund. And what's that going to do to our overall general fund? What it's percentage? Going, You're going from 20% down to, what, 17? Are you talking, I'm sorry, 3% down to 17? We don't want to go beyond a... Oh, the fund balance. I'm sorry. So fund balance would not be an appropriate source for current expense funding. This would require an increase on your tax rate. If you were to do alternative one, you're looking at a $3 million increase. That's a recurring expense year over year uh, that goes to support operating needs. So you're saying instead of going two pennies increase, go to four pennies increase if we adopt this. A little bit more than three, not four. That's right, really three million is a little more than one penny, right? One penny is two and a half million. That's correct. Yeah. Well, but if you add the two, two million five hundred and fifty-three dollars plus four hundred ninety-five, that is correct. a substantial increase. It's, it's more than a penny. Right. It's a three million dollar increase if you do that portion with the proposed two cent increase that's already there. Are you advising us or suggesting that we increase the taxes two pennies, your current suggestion, three or four? Are you revising your increased tax rate? The manager's recommended budget doesn't change, right? That's already done. I've recommended a two cent tax increase. There That's is not to. capacity in there to give any additional funding to the schools. <laughs> right. If you'd like to add more funding, to either current expense or elsewhere, then you would need to find a substantial cut to offset that, or you would need to increase your tax rate to accommodate the amount that you wanted to increase. Exactly what I wanted to hear. I, I do have one question, and that's just for the first, because I, I'm looking at both these numbers in combination. That, I think we were just taking these one at a time. No so the $3 million increase, it, is that utility piece and the preventative maintenance contract. Thank you. Yep. That's about a 1.41 penny. That's about right. Well, uh, yes. Do you have that? Okay. So it's uh, technically 1.2 cents for 1 .2. the 3.048. Thank you. I believe utilities and preventative maintenance are included in the 6.8, so they would be two separate alternatives as opposed to combining. Yeah, thank you for that. And uh, uh, Rick, if I can ask you a question here. Of course. Uh, and you're telling us that there's nothing that we can do to sort of like um, hedge ourselves, so to speak, with the 2.55. I mean, there's no way that we can hold on to that and give it to the uh, school system piecemeal. You know, when they when they get a bill, get an invoice, and they give it back to us. So 
the budget process is an annual process with the schools. We have a statutory obligation to fund their utilities. Um, so what that means typically is that the money is allocated based on what they believe they're going to spend for utilities over the course of the year. Um, that said, uh, the obligation is to pay for the utilities, not necessarily to advance the funds that they believe will be required to pay for the utilities if that number is higher than we believe that it otherwise should be. So I think it would be unreasonable to say that we don't have to fund anything, but I also think it would be reasonable to say that we don't have to fund whatever the expected amount might be based on what we believe the inflated amount. Okay. But at the end of the day, if the utilities are owed, then they're owed, and the county has that obligation to fund. Yeah. What is help? the current amount in your proposed budget for utilities? We don't break out current expense that way. That's so it's point. just a, a current expense amount that they received last year, and I can get you that number. I don't know if somebody else. You have it broken down just for utilities, or is it overall? No, we don't, we don't break current. We not break it out. Okay. You don't break current expense out that way okay. at all. Okay. So Thank current you. expense right now is proposed at forty-eight million eight hundred twenty-seven thousand one hundred fifty-one. <coughs> that same amount um, that you that they had last year. Their current expense requested amount was $59,170,941, which was a $10.3 million increase or a 21.2% increase. Give me that number again, the 48 million. 48,827,151 for current expense. Oh, I'm sorry. Current expense is issued on the monthly installments. Your current <laughs> your current expense allocation, commissioners, um, the forty eight point eight million dollars that is distributed to the school system on a one twelfth monthly basis. Um, your PAYGO capital, the three point three million, that's what was requested for us to advance last year. Mm -hmm. We worked with the school system; they received those funds um, in September so that they had those for those projects. We have consulted with our legal department, and as long as that is still applicable, then we would pay them come July 1, we would advance those funds of whatever the capital allocation would be, whether that be a 3.3 or a 3.9, as recommended by County Manager York. One time, you wouldn't divide it by 12? Not for the pay go. Okay. Because they're trying to do, a a lot of their summer projects while the schools sure. are empty with the students out and that provides them the cash flow that they need to fulfill those contracts and get those payments done before the students get back. So I can add, correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, Miss Evans, excuse me, uh, 3.9 and 48.8, I can add those two numbers together and that's the total. Okay, thank you. I'd also like to point out that that number does not include the pass through fines and forfeitures that yes. pass through the county and then are um, dispersed monthly to the school system. And that next year is coming, but projected to be a million dollars. <throat> we wouldn't be sitting here if we had $27.2 million that didn't go to Mall, would we? It'd be a lot better, wouldn't it? So the mold issue. No, if there was no mold. If there was no mold, mm -hmm. those funds were in capital. Right. So we would be addressing the additional issues with roofs, HVACs, any other capital need that the school system were to bring before the board. But it would be there. It would be there. Okay. Um, but those funds would not be able to be used for their operations. Yeah. So utility bills, teacher supplements, things of that nature. Yes. It is a pretty big hit. God, I hope we never go through that with the county termites, you know, or something crazy. You never know. So we have our two alternatives. Uh, so going back, do we have consensus for alternative one versus alternative two? Uh, we've also heard from Commissioner Thompson about reducing the ball field amounts from county capital by 350,000. That would not do anything to benefit current expense, but certainly could be another reduction. 
Well, if it, well. I just, I don't know. I'm just really desperate trying to figure out how to help my public school system. That's what I'm trying to do. And every kid that walks in the doors. You're giving them $9.8 million. I don't care if I'm giving them $900 million, Paper North. I think right now they need support. So you're just going to continue to do the same thing that's been done in the past? Well, you know, we added $19 million to our $150 million bond, which is $169 million, which I discovered last weekend. So we have gone into more debt, too. And every time we've talked about that bond, I've swore I would never go over 150 And due to my ignorance, when we voted April 5, 2021, and Craig was leader, which I always count on him, and I said, just sell the whole 150. That's what I thought I was doing. And that's why I voted against that the other week when John and I, unfortunately, you weren't here. And we voted against that because I thought, I'm not voting for that premium. And that's my ignorance. So now I know that voters, you don't have a $150 million bond. You have a $169 million bond plus interest. So we all need to own everything we do. But wouldn't you think that the $19 million would help the school system out considerably? Yes, I do, but my word is everything. But you want to give them more than that. Right now, I want to help them, but I did not vote to go over 150. But you did. I didn't think I did. I did That's too. my problem. You did not. You, you, you were correct. You voted no, I voted no, and it did not pass. No, 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 that's not, no, because I'm like told, 20, 20, 20, this is, we're getting off track here, but I didn't do what I thought I was doing because I just didn't, because I, I don't know. And um, I didn't. And I'm told that we got a $169 million bond instead of 150 And that's that's very concerning to me. Well, I'm just getting back to the fact that what you're doing is you're going to give the school system $19 million. So with your, with your goal of helping the school system, that would be a considerable help. And it so, is. It is. But the thing of it is, Bill. But it's not enough? No, it's, that's not it. The money's not enough. Not the issue. The money is not the issue to me. My word is, because every time we talked about this, I said, I will never go, I will not go over 150, because that's what our voter, you're a solid taxpayer representative too. And I said, I will not go over 150. And due to my ignorance, I did and didn't realize it. And when I found out last week, I talked to Susan, I talked to Heidi, and I talked to Rick, and because I, I screwed up, that's the way I feel, because my word is everything. Being honest is everything. And you're being no honest what. right now, but all I'm asking you to do is focus on something here. Your goal is to give the school system more money. And in this particular vote that you don't you feel like you were not honest about, you are, you are doing that. You're giving them $19 million I, that I they did not normally think they were going to have. So don't you believe that the $19 million would actually help out the school system? I do, Bill. If you believe that the $19 million would go to the proper things of the school so system. I think that word proper is the whole issue here because of doubt and, and mistrust and that's that's what we're we're just keep covering this thing all and on and, and we'll have to be real careful not to get in a rabbit hole all I'm telling you Pamela Thompson gave her word to not go over 150 and I did and didn't know it and I'm ashamed of that because now my taxpayers have 169 plus ACC and I, that isn't what I thought I did mm -hmm. and that's inexperience I'm not God, I'm not you stockbroker money. I've always counted on you for the numbers. And the rest of you guys, too. But it doesn't matter, because it does matter, but it's done now. And I'm, you know, I can't change that. But my word is, is bigger than anything, and I've messed up. And I'll admit it. But I'll get back to what I said before. You're going to give the schools $19 million more than you even wanted to, but, 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 but it happened. So yeah. don't you believe that since that happened, you're actually achieving one of the goals that you just said you had was to give the money to the school system. $19 million can do a lot. It can. It can, it can fix more problems uh, because that $19 million number was actually already in the <coughs> accounts to take care of. Them. I think that's why Craig got angry with me because I thought I'm voting against the whole thing, and I wasn't. Evidently, I was voting against the premium on the $19 million on this second bond thing. Whatever. Mm -hmm. But the thing that matters to me is I swore I wouldn't, and I did, and I made a terrible mistake, and I found out last weekend. And um, I'm just, you know. Uh, Susan, uh, the yes. Davenport model, 
does it achieve the revenues and expenses to not have to uh, increase the Davenport model? The Davenport model is going to be. Sorry about that. Exactly. You can wait if you want. It's okay. Um, so the Davenport model would would have supported issuing nineteen point five million dollars in par amount, so that would have been the principal debt, and accepting any premium that a bidder would have offered. Um, revenues were there. The board, when they took action, we issued bonds to where we would receive as close to $19.5 million in cash because we still had to take care of the cost of issuance, which are equating to right around $400,000. So when we back that out, there will be roughly about $19.1 million for projects. Yeah. And I would like to just make the board aware, when the voters approved for the bonds, it was to issue debt in the amount of $150 million for ABSS. At this point in time, we have issued a hundred and forty eight million six hundred thirty thousand dollars in principal debt accepting any premium and receiving any additional cash does not we did not violate any votes of the voters we had additional cash that came in so we will pay that back through a slightly higher interest rate Ms. Thompson, that should make you feel good no it doesn't make you feel good because we are the taxpayers. It's not you. It's we, the taxpayer, which is you if you live here. Yeah, but I, if you explain this to me really good, and you know how I felt about it, because when they went to the polls, they saw the number 150, and that's mm -hmm. all they saw. And I just, I, that, it's just, this is my personal issue. And, I, and I'm sorry. And that's just it. Well, and I will, I will address that. When we sold the initial bonds back in 2021, after that, you know, the board was very clear, $150, $150 million in cash. If we had not had the mold issue, I don't believe that we would have issued any further bonds. Once we had the mold issue, the roofs and the HVAC uh, issues were found through the evaluations yeah. and things, then it was, well, how do we pay for it? We already had those funds authorized. The expenses were covered through the Davenport models from the dedicated property tax increase, the dedicated sales tax that we received. So the debt was covered with revenues that were already coming into the county. I get it. Part of the way the debt was covered at the lower at the lower rate too was because of our solid bond rating. That's all great. <laughs> I'm just talking about me, just me, my personal issues. I mean, this one right here understands all this. I don't. I just know, I said I'm not going over 150, and I found out I did. And that's, that's for me, it's very wrong, and that's all I can say. Uh, Ms. Evans, wasn't the uh, ACC also included in that bond package of plus $150 million? It was. Mm -hmm. um, so ACC was authorized at $39.6 million, and... I don't have those figures. Oh, you don't have to have those figures. I yeah, was just trying to get. But it was thirty nine point six. But I think we've got about roughly three point eight million that we have not issued for ACC at this time. So in essence, the total bond was one eighty nine six. Yeah. You know, it has been a while. But you're not just paying that back. You're paying back that extra. <laughs> Well, actually, Ms. Thompson, what we did You first, said it ain't free, because oh, I'm going to cling on to everything yeah. you say, because I know I trust you. But that's you. why it was so important, and I made a comment about I was disappointed in ACC for not being ready with their projects, because we hit the bond market at possibly the, the lowest in history, mm -hmm. and I wanted mm -hmm. to... 1.43 percent, right. folks. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what we just got before, it's over three. Yeah. So it's almost a double interest payment. And that's why I was a little upset, but because the interest rate I knew was so low. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're able to be able to fund this through the Davenport model because of that rate was so low. Because if you look at the $150 million, well, 140 mm -hmm. with the interest rate of what we just got, put that in the Davenport model and see what that would have done to you. 
I'd have blown your socks off. I just want to get back on track and talk about the campaign. I'm sorry. Are you a commissioner? <laughs> I, mean, I, just to, I just want to get back on track. Well, I'm sorry. I'm here to listen to the budget. Well, we appreciate discussion. that. I'm not going to argue with no, you because we've had this before. Yeah, you are out of line. You do this every time, and I'm not, I don't want to hear it because I would never, ever do this to you. Don't gavel me, John, because he's really inappropriate doing this, talking to us like this, like... He just can. My I think it's rude. I'm pulling down and I'm doing so. Thank you. All right. We Thank don't. Mm. So that's, returning that's to uh, ABSS, question. current expense. Yes. Do we have consensus to look at an increase for ABSS, current expense? These are Is there interest the, in that? These don't have to be the only alternatives. Right. These are just reflecting what we heard at your last work session. All right, let's move on. So any of this is a no? Wait a minute. Uh, so I, I think that's the question that we're asking that's at this what moment, I'm asking is that we, as Heidi said, we have a few different there, options. I have to address. Um, I've heard zero motions. Correct. I'd like to hear just Dr. got a Harris. question. I'd like to hear Dr. Harris on it. I asked a question at the last meeting. I, I think you might be prepared yeah. for the Dr. Harrison, would you like to uh, come to the podium? I, I don't know. Question for you. We talked generally at the last meeting about if, if you assume that there's no increase to the managers recommended, which means that the ABSS budget is flat year over year, what generally what, what does that mean in terms of the services that ABS has provided? It, it would mean people. And I... Um, I beg your pardon. Uh, it would mean people. We'd have to cut people. Uh, I think 90% um, of our budget is, is people. Um, we've cut uh, an awful lot of people already. We've cut positions. We hadn't cut any people. We went through that last time I was up here. If we were to make move forward, it would be actual people sitting in jobs. I'm always reluctant to stand up and talk about particular positions because that results in anxiety, additional anxiety. And as I said last week, we were, I guess it was earlier in the week, we've, I've caused enough uh, frustration and anxiety already. I could stand up here and tell you we're going to cut um, cultural arts program and wouldn't even need any Kool-Aid. People would come flying out. I'm not going to cut cultural arts program. I could say we're going to cut athletic programs, get people out here to see you. I'm not going to do that. That's not what I'm, I'm all about. We've had that conversation before. Um, but as I look at people, where we would go, I, I sent that PowerPoint presentation to, to look at a couple things. The state gives us funds, of an SRO for every high school, uh, $420,000, which doesn't cover every high school. We have SROs in, in all of our schools. So we could um, cut those locally funded SROs, which would save us $3 million. We, um, you talked, I think, Mr. Paisley, about the assistant principals. Um, state gives us 22.5 assistant principals. We have 46. Uh, we could cut those 24 assistant principals and save us $1.8 million. Quick question. Look, we specifically funded SROs? Yes. So you're saying the funds that we have provided historically in the budget, you would use those for something else? No, that wouldn't be. We would. That would be out of the budget. We're talking about cutting. I'm sorry. We're talking about if we don't get what we're requesting, what would I, what would I cut? And I would say I possibly. I don't see me going there. But where could we come up with that money? To, to make up that, uh, that debt. I don't know. I don't know that. I don't know how the S, that three million dollars shows in in the budget. I think it's just part of our current expense that we allocate three million dollars to SROs. So it's not that the commissioners are funding SROs directly. It's part of that overall current expense budget. But we put the, those funds in there for SROs. That's great. And I would think that if we were to learn that they were going to be removed, we would then. I, this is on one vote. Yeah. If we would then remove that from the from the ABSS budget, 
That's not the way current expense works, though. Right. Right. right? Yeah. It's a lump sum. Yeah. They choose to spend it where they. You make all the decisions, sir. We don't have any decision making over, over what right. we slide across the table to you. I understand. Zero. And, and and that's I'm I'm trying to respond to uh, Commissioner Turner's question. Where would I Where would I go? If that were the the outcome. Dr. Harrison, school safety is a paramount concern for this board, and I think for yourself and the school board members, why would you cut SROs? I'm not saying I'm cutting SROs. I'm, I'm trying to answer a question that if we're not funded, where can we go to make up that funding? Counselors. State funds 52, counselors, social workers, and school nurses. We've already cut uh, a, a number of those. We have 100. We can cut those positions and save $3.6 million. We do have instructional support that we can use for some counselor money as well. Um, Excuse me again. Are you saying cut the difference between the 52 and the... Or, or the, the, and the, the 52 are paid for out of the state. Right. The 50, 54 four, are paid for by the state. Two are federally funded, and zero are locally funded, according to the documentation from the public school school stats. That's 21, 22. The PowerPoint that I shared with you. It's 23, today. 23. But I'm well, sorry. it's um, we're paying. We get 52 counselors. We get 52 people and. PRC program reporting code 06 can be used for counselors, social workers, and um, school nurses. We have the equivalent of 52 people there. We get money for <coughs> program code 07 is Let me instructional. Show you down. The state's saying 56, you're saying 52. Are there four vacancies? What you have out of that report doesn't break it down by the codes that they allocate us money on. It simply reported how many of these particular positions do you have out of state funds or out of whatever code in, in state funds. So we have a hundred counselors, social workers, and nurses in the the um, the code that. Code 06, and now you maybe lose the, the name of that particular code, but that covers those areas. We are we have 52 people to 52 positions. We also have code 07, which is the instructional support. In that area, we can also provide, we can use that money for counselors, social workers, and nurses as well, plus psychologists. And we do use some of those. My my attempt at which I'm failing here is to demonstrate where we have flexibility in our budget. And you know, I, if I could digress a bit and address some comments that were made earlier and then maybe get back to, to some more specifics here, I'd appreciate that opportunity. Um, the utility bills. Ms. York has a spreadsheet, and I believe all of you have a spreadsheet, with the actual monthly cost. And, and what we paid. So this is not a made up number. It's not an inflated number. Someone either in the county manager's office or a commissioner asked us about bringing all the bills as documentation. Mm -hmm. Mr. Hook sent one month, October, to illustrate what was all involved. That, that was not sent with the intent of saying, multiply this by 12, and that's our request. Our request, or, or our rationalization, is on the, um, the spreadsheet that, that Ms. York has. So what you stated, Mr. Paisley, was misleading, inaccurate, don't think that was your intent, but it was not our intent to say this October bill, some of our bills were 60 days, some of them are paid more. Uh, our intent was to show you what was involved to bring you hard copies of, of all those bills. It's not like what I get from the electric bill every month. 
we talked last time, and I think we're very willing to do this. Well, we don't have a choice. I shouldn't say we're willing to do this. We don't have a choice. <laughs> but I think that's a good option to budget what you budget. We, and I think um, Mr. Baker and Mr. Hook have talked about a format, a spreadsheet, that we let you see our bills every single month, and we could tell at what point we're getting close, and then we come back to you. Same thing with the conversation that Mr. Carter and I had regarding the, um, the, the supplements. We're having a hard time pinning down justification for that particular ask. That ask was based on 3% of what we paid in supplements last year, 22-23. Add 3% to that, and that was our ask. And the conversation we had and how Winston-Salem came up, and we were thinking about how can we demonstrate that we're not inflating this and trying to make money on this line item. And that's when I brought the example that Winston-Salem years ago did not have a fund balance. And could we, and that the contract had nothing to do with, with um, utilities or anything else, but could we come up with some type of agreement that anything left over in that particular line item reverts back to the county? Right. I think that's you know, good faith. I, yeah. Mr. Paisley, I, I don't live in fantasy land. I know what I'm doing. You know, our, our, my son was raised on the great philosopher, Nick Chagger. You can't always get what you want. But if you try some time, you get what you need. I'm trying. Not for what I want, but what, for what I need. If I were coming in here for what I want, you guys would run me out of town. I tried, realistically, to get what we need down. And as I told you the first time, and I don't want to go on and on about this, you're tired of hearing it. But we cut an awful lot of things that I didn't like cutting. And, and that will hurt us. And, and I understand how you guys feel about us because of history and, and whatever, you know. And I just, you know, I, I guess I'll go to my grave not being forgiven for being late on that budget. And that's my fault. We built our budget around board meeting on the 14th, delivered on the 15th. I had a death in the family, and I flew out of town after that meeting. Otherwise, I would have hand-delivered that to Miss York. We believe we emailed that, but as we subsequently found just last week, Miss York, that we've had some email issues, that she wasn't getting all my emails, she'd get some of the emails, and, and I'm not 100% sure that that's not what happened with that budget. So again, had I been here, I would have, I wouldn't have walked it over here, I would have driven over to the park lot and walked it in here. That, that wasn't being reckless, that wasn't being careless, it was just a matter of circumstances that we, we couldn't control. Um, the GovOps, I wasn't here when that initiated, was initiated, but I kind of smiled to myself because I spent four years in Raleigh and I'm familiar with those commissions and those committees and what they do. I understand what the, my understanding of what the intent of the GovOps investigation was to discern how we got into the condition we were. And possibly provide us some suggestions or solutions <coughs> to get us out of that. To me it was a joke because it epitomizes the we're from Raleigh here to help you. <laughs> and I knew there were some issues when I reached out to Ms. Gailey on May 20th because we were working really, really hard on this budget. No, it wasn't May 20th, whenever it was. Whatever it was, because we were getting calls from the GovOps people for all this information that was taking up all our time. And it was information that was public information that they could have put their hands on. But we're pulled away from our budget work to get that information for them. Senator Gailey was kind enough to call them and delay it until after 
uh, I think she delayed it till May 20th, which was would have been a week after we got the, the budget in. So the first part was about the mold, and we take seriously the, 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 the liability that we have, but it said may be liable, may be liable. But there are also provisions about state of emergency, and we were certainly in a state of emergency, and I looked at that, I read that, I saw how we responded. Had I been here, I would have responded the same way as far as the, as far as the bids and, and so forth. The second part of that told us about an audit exception we had in our audit. That was public information in October. And I told the reporter, you probably, your, your publication probably reported on that back in October. So what we got from them was a joke. It would, and, and, the, and the waste of money is the money that the state, and, and the context of that, and I don't know whether you saw TV or print media what I said, the context of that is with all the needs we have in this state, the state is funding that type of activity. It would be like me paying for a meteorologist to walk outside and tell me whether it's hot or not. So that's what they, I just, uh, no mean, to be disrespectful, but I guess it was. So those are probably good people that did that, probably related to some legislator, I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> the, um, and I understand your, um, your interest and your obligation in, in keeping the tax rate low. Um, Mr. Paisley, I, I hear more from people to tell me what I want to hear than I do from people who tell me what I don't want to hear. So I always kind of, keep that in mind that it's never as good as I think it is because some people are not telling me what I need to, to know. But I do know, I talked with a, um, a young teacher the other day who lives in Graham and she probably appreciates the, the low tax increase, tax, tax rate. And I met her um, back in 2016 when she was a teacher at Turrentine. And she reminded me that she had babysat our children when I lived in Orange County, and she was the um, was a student at Orange High, and so I left here in 2018. Came back um, in March and realized that we were um, in the situation we were in dealing with the virtual school. We made some tough decisions about the virtual school, and one of the things we did with the virtual school was cut the Spanish position in half based on on students. And I looked at that and saw the name of that teacher, and I said, "That's my." Uh, former babysitter. And, but we only had enough students for a half teacher, so we offered her a half-time position in the virtual school, a half-time position at a, uh, at a brick and mortar school. Problem was, we had no half-time positions at brick and mortar school, so her option was to go to a brick and mortar school or teach half-time. She came to see me earlier in the week and said, was there any way that it could be worked out at the virtual school. As much as I wanted to say yes, I said no. And, and I asked her about what she had done since I um, had last seen her. And, and she left turn time to teach elsewhere because of the teacher supplement. And she came back to teach in the virtual school because she wanted to be in a virtual setting. <coughs> and where she is now, that she told me that if I, and it's all very respectful, if I have to go back into brick and mortar, I'm going to do it next door where I can make 5% more. So. They leave for all kinds of reasons. We try to do exit interviews. We have the teacher working condition survey. We pay a lot of attention to that. I've sat down with a couple of principals last week that uh, I don't like what that says. They know now, those who were here before, and I think those who weren't here with me before, understand how important it is to support our teachers. I know. The number one reason that teachers leave the profession is because of lack of administrative support. It's not because of salary. But oftentimes they jump from system to system because of salary. And um, yes, yeah, so I would not argue that many teachers leave us because of the lack of administrative support. It's something we're cognizant of. It's something that we work on and, uh, and work on that pretty hard. Um, I think that's the extent of my preaching today. And we thank 
And did, did I come close to getting your uh, response? I got the gist. Thank you. Okay. okay. Do you want to pull the PowerPoint back up or do you want to look at your spreadsheet? I would recommend we start with a spreadsheet. And if you'll bear with me for an exercise, I'm wondering how each of you feel about an increase at all to ABSS. Not looking at amounts. Who is open to any sort of increase in current expense? For ABSS for 2425. Then we can work on that. I mean, yep, I, exactly. I, I don't love this process, but yeah, I mean, I, I think we need to increase it. Okay. So What's the rate of inflation, Ms. Evans? I believe it's 3.3%. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Just want to make sure we agree on the number, because I agree with 3.3 .3 as well. So if we take their last year's budget, and I think we just Got through going through those numbers. I heard forty-eight million eight hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Correct. Is that correct? Well, you don't have to just just multiply that number by three point three percent, and it gets you one. I believe it's like one point eight five five million dollars. Mm -hmm. But that increase, just the rate of inflation does not even get you to the 2.553 utility. So, but if you add the, th and there's another factor here, the 3.3 that will be added to the 48.827, gets you $52 million, 127,000. So if you were to take the 3.3% multiply it by 52, that's where the 855 number comes. 1855. That's just the Say that again, please. I'm just doing some math in my head, okay. which makes it hurt, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, so, the alternative current expenses that we have here are completely unrealistic as far as an inflation rate. The only way that you would need the extra funds is if you had extra things to do with them. So, I understand where Mr. Car uh, Mr. Turner is coming from about the expense, uh, the the increase, but just wanted to put it in perspective. I wanted to put it in perspective of the inflation rate, because don't forget, a few years ago, inflation rate was much higher than that, mm -hmm. double that, <coughs> more than double that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to bring that to your attention when you're trying to determine what your increase to the school system would be. That's all. At your 3.9, you're more than doubling the inflation rate. Well, I put an inflation rate on at 3.5 just to make math easy, so the numbers that I gave you in my head are probably... Yeah, so probably it's, probably it's more than double the inflation rate Since that we're giving them. With oh, the yeah, that's what I'm saying. That If you add, that's $9.8 million, and if you take the make it easy for math, $10 million, you you have something that's closer to a 17, 18% hand, yeah. uh, which is completely unrealistic. So I just want to put that in perspective because I know there's some folks here that want to uh, increase it. So just take that in consideration when you pick your number that you want to increase. That's all I'm saying. Well, I think yeah, we are obligated to pay the utility. Absolutely. And some, some we've had to figure out a methodology in which we're going to make sure that the utilities are covered. I completely agree. But let's let's look at what Mr. Paisley put out today. And I went through when you when I had to, had the time just to figure out. And see, I don't know I don't know the numbers, but I know I'm pretty daggum close. I don't know the numbers of these salaries, but I do hear 121 positions locally funded. Now, if you just put, I mean, I think I would put like a $40,000 salary on those 121 positions, it could give you close to like a $5 million number. I mean, yeah, $5 million. So the reason I'm even bringing that up, Commissioner Carter, is 
the numbers that we just walked through that we we give ABSS fifty two million dollars. Right. So if we pay eleven point six million in teacher supplement, they're asking for one point four. That number has to be added to that teacher supplement number. Right. So that gives you like a sixteen million dollar number. Now that sixteen million dollar number would have to be subtracted from the fifty two number, right? Okay. You just get around, give me a problem. That's, that's, that's basically what you're, you're using local funds to pay, right. pay people. And Heidi read the statute that that's not what we're supposed to be doing. But we are. So if you just look at the seven, at the $16 million number, that's $16 million that the Alamance County taxpayer is paying for some type of salary. Right. So if I take the $16 million number and I divide it into $52 million, that only, I mean, I subtract it from $52 million, that means I'm only allowing about 35 or $36 million to maintain our schools, which Heidi has read, that's what we're obligated to. So I'm with you on the utility bill, absolutely. I don't want to pay it, but I'm obligated and responsible for it, so I will write you a check for it. Uh, but I just want to put it in perspective, right? Uh, because we have 38 schools. I'll subtract one for the virtual school because I know it's not brick and mortar, but that's $37 million. Just want to put that in perspective. That will can you maintain and operate the school system for $36 million? I mean, just look at the new at, uh, Southeastern High School. Um, I would tell you that that to maintain and operate that school is $1.3 million a year. That's the whole ball of wax. So when you look at it like that, I think if you didn't have, pay, I didn't think if you weren't paying the local funded positions, you would have plenty of money. Actually, you'd have a number that's closer to that one that you would have available to take care of these problems. Now, in those 122, was it locally funded? 121. 121. Does that include our SROs? It does. It does? I, I don't know what, what I think so. profile, no. where they got their figures, but our, our SROs are locally funded. For middle school. Other than $420,000 worth. But that would only be, what, 37? I don't think it includes the SROs. I don't know, but I know SROs is 37. At, um, I'm thinking one in each school. Okay, and they get paid sixty thousand a year. So our, our contract is seventy five thousand dollars per. Thank you. Covers car and everything, I think. Yes, it does. Seventy five k is for you said everything, salary and car uniform everything. Okay. Yeah. Do we the county pay every we, penny we, of that? We do have. Sure. We do half in the school sure. system. Sure. The way I understand. Right. I'm clear about that. I think it's half. I think we pay half, and the school system pays half. Of the yes. Um, there's only. Go ahead, go ahead, Sandy. Speak up. We don't mind. We don't mind at all. There's only 13 or 15 um, county positions. The rest of those are city municipalities. Okay, that is true. But the 75, 75,000 per officer supplements those salaries for those um, LEO partners. I did not mean to interrupt your meeting. No, no, no. You're all good. Not a problem. We've kind of loosened this process up. Absolutely. <laughs> Except for Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, that was supposed to be funny. You can smile at him. <laughs> Is there interest in a utility increase for the schools? I feel like I've been around a circle and come back and I don't know where I am. So. Okay. <laughs> How can we help? Commissioner Lashley, would you like to propose an adjustment of an inflationary amount? No, ma'am. Okay. I'm just putting things in perspective because so you, your recommendation then is to take the 48 from last year, leave it where it is. And let them figure out how to pay the utilities out of that. No, they're no. adding 3.9 million. <coughs> well, that's um, capital, right? Yeah, that's, that's capital. That's capital. That's, yeah, not, that's, that's not, not. That's right. operating funds. Right. And that's not coming out of our 
Uh, but I, I, like I said, I would be okay in providing the money of 2.55 for the utilities. That's why I reached out to Rick Stevens to see what we can do there. Right. Uh, I have the same see, conversation. Yeah. I, I believe, like you do, there it, there has to be some type of guardrails. Uh, you can't just, like I said, like I told Dr. Harrison, and, and it's true, when I push the money across the table to the school system, right? that's where I go. I don't have any say so about it. I can't, all, the only way I could do it is I could just wait till the audit comes out to see if they exactly. did that. So that's the only problem I have. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the only issue that I have is there has to be some guardrails for this because of, in the last audit, correct me if I'm wrong, the audit said that they couldn't find $2 million. Not couldn't find $2 million. Overspent two point three. Yes. yeah. Yes. So when you have something like that, and it, it's just that you, I just have to have some guardrails. I have to have some assurance that what I'm push, pushing across the table is going to go for what it's Sure. Mr. You know, Chairman, I was like, also, I didn't mean, I didn't mean. Sure. I didn't mean to interrupt. But I remember a couple of years ago, I think we did something similar with the SROs. We weren't sure if if ABSS was going to have SROs in the second semester, so we put some money aside in a line item. And we said, if, if you get SROs or higher SROs for the second semester, come back. That money was available. It was budgeted. I wonder if we do the same thing with this and just budget it, leave it there. They need it after showing the actuals for, you know, for six months or whatever it is. They come back, it's there. If they don't need it, it's not there. I was thinking that was for the sheriff, so, uh, for funding the SROs for the sheriff. Am I wrong? I wasn't here at the time, so, but I think it was uh, sheriff. Those are those are the county employees. That right. Was, I don't think right. Is it, it was, different? Is it, it categorically different? It yeah. is, yes. Burlington pays for Burlington right. schools. Mebbin has, yeah, they all do. They get you can't, you can't just put the money in a fund and say, there it is, or in a, in a in a line item or in a, an account or something? I don't believe that the statutes allow you to fund current expense in that way. I don't think you can. Uh, please, if I'm wrong, <laughs> I'm happy to be corrected. But I think current expense is that you give them an amount and they have the flexibility to appropriate those funds as they need. So it's not appropriated to them yet. It's appropriated to the county with the intent that they can Right. You're not adding that to their current expense then. And a utility cost is a current expense. 3.5% for inflation of the 48827000 I'll round it off is 1,708,000, actually 9,000. I think I could support that. That's the inflation rate. But I don't think I can support all this increased monies given the history that we're enduring or living with today. I have a quick question. Are there any... Yes. Are there any comments about anything other than the school system left remaining? Are there anything? Is there anything else about this budget other than the school system that we need to go over before Monday? I, think that's I haven't it. heard any questions raised yeah. from any commissioner other than what we've discussed with the county workforce and with the ABSS. I mean, Commissioner Turner, I'd love to give some more money to Parks and Recreation. But I don't have any. Yeah. I don't have any money to give them. I'd, I'd like to give them an extra, you know, hundred thousand bucks. And the reason being is that's the department in this county that actually has over a thousand people who actually donate their time. And if we didn't have those people doing that, Parks and Recs couldn't do half of what they do. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to, but I just don't have any money. Well, what I'd like to suggest is, if this is the only remaining budget item. We don't have to decide this today. We know it's somewhere between zero and probably 6.8. That that's where this board likely will land. Mm -hmm. And I, I think we don't have to de decide it. Let's decide it on Monday and we'll make a decision and there'll be a vote and that'll be it. That's my suggestion. And we need to look at guardrail. And, uh, I don't know that we can find any. Yeah, I don't know if we can find any. I know Rick has made it so perfectly clear that, like you said, you know, current expenses of different monster. I just want to make sure I'm not hearing that you don't think every school should have 
a safety measure SRO because with all the school shootings we've all lived through the last several years, I want to make sure that every commissioner knows the value of having law enforcement on site. Amen. I want to, okay. SR, I will pay good money for safety. Okay. Because um, we've seen what happens when they don't. We've seen what happens, unfortunately, when they do. This, uh, this world is, is so evil. And, and I just want to make sure that the big fight, like I said the other day, has always been about maintenance. It's always our go-to. And I just want to make sure both sides are holding both sides accountable, that we are never finding ourselves in this place again, because it's, it's just a real whipping stick that you can go back to and do it. It's, it's kind of like a bad divorce. <laughs> we've got a bad marriage here, and we've got a bad divorce, and um, we just can't, we just, we got to get past this, because with all these expenses and everything, we talk about utilities and all that, you know, the, our schools make the world happen. I mean, if you don't have education, you don't have anything. That's what businesses come here for. They always ask about your educational system. And, um, and I just hope we can get to the point where we quit beating up the whoever and, and start right here to find what's going to work. Because um, all we're doing is going backwards. That's all we're doing is going backwards. And I don't know if, if some even care because it's, um, it's gotten really personal. I hear it, and if you, you've got a, a set of ears, you can hear it too. Um, I, just, I just want this to work because um, this, is like, this, is, this is not fair to any of us, the whole county, because um, our school system is, needs to be a bright, shining star, just like our parks, just like anything that brings positive to this county. And um, I know how hard teachers work, and I know how hard leadership works, and I know how hard I want families to be able to count on this because um, it's a given. It's supposed to be. So um, I'm just saying that. Have we, have we decided that we can't set the funds aside in a county fund for them to come back and get once they've exhausted their expenses? Or utilities. The county attorney. Um, I, I, I have. I'm looking at a couple different options right now. I'll be honest with you. I'm trying to research this on the fly as we're having this conversation. Uh, I do think it's possible to have funds set aside for what we think might be an overage that comes to us. I do think that's possible. Um, I think what's not allowed is for us to intentionally underfund their utilities because we know we're going to make it up later with funds we have set aside. I think it's very possible that that would be deemed to be not funding in, at all. But if we deem, if we fund an amount that we deem to be appropriate based on past usage and that appears to be appropriate based on their need and then know we're going to supplement that later on with county funds, I think that's possible. But again, it's not something that I've seen done anywhere else before. So I'm trying to research this on the fly. Um, I just remind the board that this budgeting process is supposed to happen once a year. They're supposed right. to get the allocation. So by, by setting it up in this way, it seems as though we are underfunding their operation, and I would hate for us to do that. Well, when you, do, when you look at the numbers they gave us for October, which is on a 66-day cycle, if you take it and divide it by 66 and then multiply by 365, you come up with about $3.2 million. We're looking at $2.5 million for utilities in the first option. So we're awfully close. I mean, we're $900,000 apart, but I mean, in, in the scheme of things, that's, that's Well, every month won't be the same. That's be right. be nice if it would be. I pay mine as estimated month. every month, same amount, but they don't do that for this. But this is a high month. Yeah. So if that was their highest month, I think Dr. We, Harrison? I was just going to ask if possibly Mr. Baker, County Attorney, our Attorney, Mr. Cook and I could think, get together sometime Monday to see what type of guardrails would be permissible. You know, we want to be accountable. We'll put things in place that you can check on us and check off on us and make sure we're going okay. Um, I'm, I'm hearing that some things might not be, but maybe we can kind of figure out some, some mechanisms we can put in place that can better assure you that we're spending money as we said we would 
and that we have not overprojected intentionally. Again, like the, the example I used was the, the teacher supplements. It's hard to pinpoint that. I think there are probably some things we can do with that. I think the, the utilities thing is taken care of. Um, Let me respond to that. It is 406 now. So your day is largely over. My day was over yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm here by myself. I told, I told staff not to come. Jenny's trying to get me to fire her, so she... <laughs> and our personnel, technically 5 o'clock, is a bewitching hour as well. Uh, is it possible that you and Mr. Baker and Mr. Stevens and your folks can have some recommendation by noon Monday. Our meeting is at 6.30 p.m. Yes. Gentlemen, do you agree? Yeah. We can look at bills and think of ideas. And Absolutely. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. I would request, and I know that all of us have had email issues. Um, yeah, I'd it is fixed now. For the record, <laughs> we are able to email each other. Our IT has released every email that I did not receive. Yeah, I could not open the school board's recommended budget. They use Google Docs, and we don't, and that has been problematic for us. That's a different issue. <laughs> okay. All right. So if I use Google Google Chrome, I can open it. Is that? I'm asking a question that I don't. I have I'm no not clue. Sure. I'm not okay. Sure yeah, which is a problem with that too. Yeah, we welcome your input. Thank you. So the staff would need some direction in order to bring back a budget ordinance for adoption for Monday evening. Would you, are you suggesting that we wait until Monday noonish or Monday afternoon to get that direction? Or are we not ready to adopt on Monday evening? I think I would really encourage us to pass a budget at our 6.30 meeting Monday at the latest. Uh, there's no time for a meeting in between. Yeah, we're I think that's why session. we're continuing to ask about numbers and if there's any sort of consensus in terms of funding for ABSS. Is I don't that, think there's consensus. I would recommend you come back with your one current proposed budget as option one and option two possibly if we can include some number like the 1.7 million for utilities in addition to your current budget uh, would be option one and two. Uh, don't come back with an option three please. <laughs> so any increase as we've said would increase the tax rate and you would like me to have an ordinance that shows an increase to support a 1.7 million increase in utilities? No, I don't want an increase at all. But I particularly do not want an increase above 1.8% for a total of 45 cents per hundred. Yes, you're asking my opinion. That's it. Uh, so I would hope that would be an option. That is a but it's, different option that has not been proposed for discussion. I just, so, I think you just, I, did, just misspoke. That's all. Oh. Because I, I thought you were looking at 1.7 million. He said 1%. 1.7%. Okay. Uh, he said 1.8 okay. okay. pennies. We don't have right. 1.8 pennies. So that's going to decrease by half a million. Not percent. Okay. I think that is, percent, I, I think that is a new proposal that we have not discussed. Are you wanting to make that proposal for discussion? I would love to have that as a possibility. 45 pennies per hundred uh, is not going to kill taxpayers. It's going to hurt a number of people. But And it's not going to make anybody happy except for possibly people that are going to receive part of the gravy. Uh, but I think it's something that I can support. Mr. Chairman, so I clear that you're saying that what Dr. Harrison and his team and our team work on Monday 
whatever they come up with in the needed utility expense for the county, for the school system, which we have to pay, you want us to have our county manager subtract that from what she's already prepared, plus an additional two-tenths of a cent, to bring a net budget at 1.8 pennies increase. That's not what I said. Uh, that wasn't what you said, because you said you wanted 1.8 cent increase alone. I want a 1.8 cent per hundred increase as a maximum. Right, which means <coughs> she's got to take whatever we come up with for utilities out of the rest of the matter. Right, there's no reason to add anything for utilities. In fact, we would be decreasing the manager's proposed budget by... 585000 Give me that number again. Uh, 585,813. Yeah, that's roughly the number I came up with. And, the and I think correcting. you take that from the non-field teacher position supplement. So it nets out as a zero. With all due respect, I think uh, I need to see if there's consensus of the board for that direction. I don't yeah, because there. there are five of us. Right. John, I don't see how you can, can add utilities into this, cut us to 1.8%, and tell the county manager after all the cuts she's put in there that she's going to have to take another potential $2.5 million out of her budget to get to that 1.8% decrease, a 1.8 cent decrease of uh, tax rate. I don't think that. 5.7 million, which is basically Mr. Hook's number per month for utilities, is an accurate 533,000. I'm sorry, thank over you. Over 60 days. Right. Uh, I don't think that's an accurate number. I think uh, Mr. Lashley said 3.5 inflation rate, that is 1.7 million. Uh, it will have all kinds of numbers floating around, but you add, you made the mistake of asking me what I wanted. <laughs> I wanted some clarity on what the board wanted me to bring back for Monday. We are slated to adopt. We need a budget ordinance that reflects the direction that the board would like to move for an adopted budget. I would like to know, are there any pots of money anywhere in Alamance County that you could cover the 6.8 million. That's what I want to know. And if it's a no, that's fine. But I just want to know if you can find it. There are no pots of money that okay. I could fund a current expense okay. allocation that's of fine. that magnitude. I just wanted it on the record. Maybe we need a break. Should we, we have three scenarios. Do you want to take a break and then come back and revisit the three scenarios? Well, there's five of us, so we can all listen. It's not just one's opinion. <laughs> Craig, did you did you want to take a break for a bit? I want to take a long break. I want yeah. to take a break. Yeah, break. yeah, I understand. Mm. Do we have but I just want to make sure that not a jerk. Yeah, I know you. Have I look to the jerk. It's very difficult. And I'm going to get some. You're moving on the adjournment. I'm moving for a recess. But can I move for the adjournment first? Are you? I mean, if as long as we have this document here, I think we can. We haven't given our time. Wait, wait, wait a second. If, if we adjourn the meeting, then we're going to need to be able to notice another meeting on Monday before the meeting Monday night if we want to meet before Monday night. I'm not suggesting that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page. <laughs> just want to make We've got a long agenda Monday night as it is. It's not too bad. We have a motion to adjourn, I, and I did make the second. I just, I just need to say something before this meeting's over. Say it. Uh, well, first of all, I want to apologize to Dr. Harrison and, and Sandy Ellington Graves while you're here, because Ms. Thompson was right in what she said earlier. There was a comment made by myself that was made out of anger, frustration, agitation in general. And it sounded good, but it was nowhere close to what needed to be said. And I need to make an apology to the teachers of using the word Kool-Aid drinker. Uh, I knew that I had stepped out of bounds and got over my skis, I like to say, when I heard Dr. Harrison's comment. And I also heard from friends that I have 
that are teachers asking me why. And then when you get a text from your sister <laughs> at midnight asking you, what are you thinking about? Why did you say that? I realized that I did something wrong. And Ms. Thompson is correct. It's not helpful. It did not help the process here. And that I apologize to for you as well. Appreciate that. And I promise that going forward that you won't have to deal with that anymore. Not one, I'm not gonna be here and fight. <laughs> but, <laughs> neither, neither am I. But but two, I just want I just want all my friends and, 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 and relatives actually that are teachers that you know that was a flippant comment and I don't always get it right. And uh, my apologies to you. Thank you. Bill, sometimes what comes out in our heads of, of comes out of our mouth hadn't been cycled fully through our heads, so we're all guilty. Well, I'm having a problem re actually uh, gaining gaining like you know mental capacity. And uh, after, uh, like Miss Thompson said, you're right. Facebook blew up. I had friends texting me at dinner and at my niece's ball game last night. And I don't ha I don't do Facebook. Uh, I have a Facebook page, but I couldn't tell you even how to get into that kind of thing. So. I realized, like, oh man, Dr. Harrison was right. Probably should have backed off on that. But um, I just have a hard time recollecting things. And going through that, that stress, it's bad when you get a call from your doctor who tells you, you got to stop. We, we, you got to stop. You can't do this. And I understood what he was saying because I stayed up late last night researching this stuff, looking for an answer. Well, Not, you and I were talking at 9.30 and like yeah. that, or 10 o'clock. Yeah, it's after 10 o'clock. Bill, that's, that's not healthy for you. I know. After what you just come out of. I, oh, I know. And that's what scares the H-E double it hockey should. sticks out Your of me. sister's probably told you the same thing. And I need to, to be cool, and uh, you don't stir the pot when you're not, I, I'm not really anywhere close to 4.30 mentality, and I should have stayed away, and actually I should have just not, not said anything, and I hope you'll accept my call. I'm good. Any other comments? We still need to give them some direction before we go into, if, if we're trying to go into a meeting Monday night and they don't know where they're going to try and get us. And we don't well, have we'll the figure it out information. Monday. Well, I was just going to... have to adopt a budget ordinance on Monday night, right? I'd need to have that in front of you to actually adopt something. But couldn't we use the spreadsheet as a guidance? Like to take things out? Because I know on the right-hand side, I know on the right-hand side there is, uh, man, that's the worst part. It should be on your Sorry screen in front of you. Oh, yes, Mr. right here. Yes. Thank you very much. I see that if we actually look at this spreadsheet that we can actually put, you said you got the pivot penny equivalent here. Uh, can we populate that that side If you on, on Monday night to see where um, where we would be if we, add, we take things away or we add things? Um, I think that'd be very helpful. We absolutely can. And if we were to go with that inflationary rate that Commissioner Paisley suggested of 3.5%, that would take us to a tax rate of 0.459. So that would be a 2.652 cent increase. So that would be, I believe, the recommended scenario two. Scenario three was a flat 0.45 cents. And then I believe I heard the scenario one was the manager's recommended budget. So those are the three that I've heard so far. I see what you're saying. Thank you for, thank you for pointing that out. Okay. Because I was, okay. That's, that's it. That, that, that's the one with, with absolutely no increase. Okay. More than anything else. We have an open motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioners Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on LocalGov TV. Please go to www.localgov.com 
lovetvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the County Commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioners meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.